Hey guys, Brandon here. This is the first video that I'm putting out since the launch of Long Island Railroad for Train Sim Classic. Been kind of busy uh, with some post-launch stuff, uh, doing the streams with Jamie. So now that it's the weekend, I'm able to settle down a little bit and uh, do some of my own stuff. So during uh, one of the streams with Jamie, I sent out a link to this scenario one of the ones that we used heavily during testing to stress test the signals, and it's from St. Albans to Penn Station via Mainline 2. Um, it's a cool little stress test of the signals because you're switching tracks a lot, and there's a lot of weird signal progressions uh, following the train into Jamaica under a restricting signal and seeing the other signals clear as that train moves on. It tests a little bit of access positive train stop as well at F interlocking just after Harold on your way to Penn. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of issues at first when we created this scenario. And it helped me refine the signal scripts a bit and get them to where they are now. So without further ado, let's get this train set up and depart for Jamaica. And I'll have my frame rate counter up as well. I'm not playing on like totally maxed out settings, but I am playing at a uh, 3440 by 1440. Yeah, it's one of the ultra widescreen displays that I'm sitting at right now at my desk. Marker light off, headlight on. And it seems like some of my graphic settings changed. Like my anti-aliasing seems lower than it normally is. I don't, I don't know, something got reset. It's okay though. It'll be fine for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, and then maybe I'll go back and fix it. So yeah, towards the end, when I was preparing this scenario for like public distribution, I wanted the train routed down a different track into Jamaica because it was the dispatcher was automatically switching things around, kind of weird. So what I did was I forced pathing through. Um, that track down there, which is our first objective, Montauk Branch Track 2. But, um, I didn't realize I'd made it a stop instruction, not a go via. So, if you if you leave pretty much immediately from St. Albans, you'll get there early, anyway. And it'll be fine. But it wasn't intended, I'm sorry about that. Now, I'm just sipping on my morning coffee. Watching the sunrise outside, over the Northeast Corridor. Kind of what I like to do in the morning, just watch the sunrise. It's currently... Shit, what time is it? 5.30. So yeah, as you may have noticed back there, we had a forced 70 drop. That's part of the progression coming up here to hall interlocking. Those two alarms right there, the first one was for the forced cab drop to um, 40, and then the second one was due to the uh, track speed changing from 80 to 60. So you have to acknowledge both. Yeah, something did happen to my anti-aliasing settings. Definitely gonna fix that after. And just coast down the hill into hall interlocking. Alright, so we've got a forced 30 drop there. Actually, no, it's not a forced one. Um, it's because of the signal ahead, I believe. Yeah, we've got an approach slow. <clears throat> Co 
because we're diverging under an approach slow, so the preceding block will drop you to a 30 code, because it's a 30 mile an hour switch. So there's the approach slow, the home signal for hall interlocking. One of the kind of annoying things is access will pick up on the track speed for the crossovers as well, so you have to acknowledge every time that the track speed changes at a crossover. I think that's being worked on by Ryan, the locomotive scripter. It was something he was exploring recently, which is pretty cool. I think the premise of it was like to look ahead about like a thousand feet and like ignore any speed changes or whatever, I don't know. I forget all the little specifics. All right, so we got a 15 drop, which means our path into Jamaica is not clear. Otherwise, that would have stayed at 30. This signal right here, it's most favorable is what it is right now, which is slow approach. So it's kind of cool how your approach into Jamaica is dependent on the signals around just before the platforms and stuff. And I added this random AI train in here just to add a little bit more life to the scenario. And it was cool to see uh, the AI do the stuff with the signals. He also has a slow approach. So yeah. You're meant to get to this spot around this time, a little bit early, a couple minutes before the uh, AI train departs, because the AI train is, is sitting in the platform there in track six, and is meant to depart at 12.08. So you got two minutes. I'm gonna stop at the signal, I'm not gonna stop like right on top of this destination marker, because like I said, that was an accident, I'm sorry guys. But I'll stop at the restricting signal here. And then we'll proceed into Jamaica. And we'll have plenty of time. We'll get to see everything. So yeah, the reason why this isn't a stop signal is because... Well, one, we're, we're routed to the same track that that train is currently occupying. Each signal, if you're familiar with how signals are placed in Railworks, has a link for each possible path through the interlocking. That train is fully clear of that link, because that link ends like just past the switch point there. So once the train is cleared of that link, it's not showing occupied anymore, so then it can upgrade to a restricting. If that train was back further and still fouling the switch, then it would be a stop. Just a little bit of facts. Alright, so cool. That AI train isn't set to depart for another 30 seconds. It actually results in pretty perfect timing for us to creep up right behind him. Hmm, take another sip of my coffee. It's delicious. It's 12.08, and he is departing, as you can see. And then you just get to move right into the platform behind him. another random AI train that I added. None of like the timings or the AI 
is realistic aside from like our train and the train we're following. So you see that that signal right there just flipped to restricting because he cleared the link for that path. And then once he, uh, excuse me, once he clears the uh, next wayside signal, it'll upgrade again to slow approach. kind of peeved. My graphic settings got all screwed up, because sometimes I bounce between um, playing this on my television and then playing it here at my desk. Something got jacked. So I apologize for the uh, shitty graphics at the moment, or shittier than, it, than is normal for me. Anyway. Uh, he cleared the next signal as well, so it's been upgraded to a slow clear. And then you may be able to see, I'll zoom, that the uh, home signal here upgraded to an approach. The next one's a stop and proceed, because he's occupying that block. And then once he clears, um, where is it? Yeah, Jamaica Avenue. Right around there. And this will upgrade to approach medium, I believe. We're almost ready to depart anyway. There we go. Wait for the conductor's buzzer. We are on the move. Let me see if we can see that signal flip. wonder if it will. Yeah, it just flipped to approach medium. These signals were very, very difficult to script. It took me a very long time. And they're still, like, not even close to perfect. I mean, like, the functionality is fine. Like, you get this code at this point, and then the preceding code is this at this point, and the signal aspect, blah, blah, blah. Like, all that, for the most part, is pretty good. There's just a couple, like, core game issues that I'm working through that I'm not sure that I can resolve. It's usually around, like, a train starting a scenario on top of a signal. Like it's straddling the signal. Alright, so we've got a clear. I think that's the mail dock bridge. So once we pass that, that should get us to a 70 code or an 80 code. I'm guessing a 70 because of that AI train's not crazy far in front of us. Yeah. But uh, he might clear a signal block, and then we might get bumped up to an 80. Like, that's kind of... That's been confusing a couple people. Like, why does the cab signal change and there's nothing in front of me? Well, there is something in front of you, you're just not aware of it, because it's out of your view. And there we go. It just flipped up to 80. So then, I'm guessing that once we enter... The interlocking here, that'll drop me down to a clear 70. And then I can even see at the end of the interlocking, it's it might be tough for you to see. Um, that'll be the first approach in uh, the progression. So this whole area from Jamaica to Woodside operates under like a double approach 
concept. So you'll have two 40 codes in a row. Nicknamed double approach. Because um, there's a lot of like single head signals here that can only display approach. It doesn't have the bottom head that can indicate approach medium. So like normally this first 40 code in the chain would be an approach medium, but because that signal type can't... Um, oh, damn, I guess we just hit that signal at the right time to where the other train changed blocks. Sometimes you get synchronized to the, uh, the trains in front of you when doing this. We'll catch up to him, though. Guarantee it. I made him go slow for a reason. So what I'm expecting here is to have a clear 70, and then at the bridge at Forest Hills, we'll hit that first approach. Nah, we're synced with this guy right now. Not for long. there's an approach medium. That would be the first signal in the uh, double approach. So that'll give us a 40 code. Unless he happens to clear a signal block just as we pass under it. But, yeah, there we go. He should be around Woodside right now, I would imagine. Yeah, he just entered Wood Interlocking. So him passing that signal got us that upgrade. Probably get a 70 code at this track circuit. Never mind. Oh, he cleared the other track circuit inside Wood, okay. So that'll, that, that might be a clear 70. Might be. Nah, he's clearing signal blocks like a fiend. Here's the clear 70 I was expecting. We'll probably upgrade to... Eh. No, I don't think. We'll pass the next signal before he passes that one. Maybe. Ah, oh, it's gonna be close. This signal right here is a implied 70 code, if it's a clear. But, uh, that's the first signal in the approach chain. Yeah. As soon as we passed that signal just now, he passed his signal. Hence why we never got the drop to um, just uh, 40 code. So if I look ahead at the signals at wood, that tree's in the way. Um, Ah, uh, it just flipped to clear. 
because before that tree got in the way, I did see it as an approach medium. Now it's a clear. So yeah, you have a persistent 70 code all the way from that signal bridge back there before the curve to uh, to Harold. And then at a certain point in Harold, it should upgrade to an 80 if you're continuing straight and not like switching tracks and stuff. Another clear signal here. This is the uh, distance signal for Harold. Passing by an AI train here. Nice. So this is the part of the scenario that really stress tested the signals. Like it's cool um, bouncing around between codes between Jamaica and Woodside. And I did have the timing more strict previously, like, not strict, but we'd leave Jamaica earlier, so we'd hit more 40 codes along the way. But as I was testing and, and all that, I adjusted the timings a bit to experience different things. Alright, so we got an approach medium here at Herald. That'll drop us to a 40 code. And then immediately after, there's an approach. And it just flipped to an approach medium. So we're like right on that AI train's ass almost. Well, not like right on it, but getting kind of close. He is getting kind of close to Hunter's Point Avenue. It's a it, pretty slow crawl, and I made sure he w goes even slower than normal, just so we, the player has a chance to catch up to him and experience what we're going to experience up ahead. So this is pretty cool. Uh, now that we're in zone A, you get to see medium approach. What medium approach means, it's expecting the next signal to be a stop signal, and you have to slow down to 30 miles an hour as soon as the signal's cl uh, clearly visible. Excuse me. It's the diverging version of approach. So, approach in zone A, not switching tracks, next signal stop. Medium approach, you are switching tracks, next signal stop. So Amtrak has different aspects for those different things. So what's cool is that as part of this route, you have to know both Long Island aspects and Amtrak aspects. So we should be coming up to a stop signal ahead, and we are. Access positive stop is already kicking in a bit. And there's our 15 code before that stop signal. So PTC is going to enforce the stop before this signal. And it is pretty far out. Like, there we go. It's kicking in again. You can try to jiggle with it a little bit and coast pretty slow see how close you can get. There's an AI train and into line four. Yeah, that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get to it. Alright, so let me zoom into the signal and uh, just wait here for the AI train to do its thing. So it needs to, its, its ass just needs to clear like this point in order for the link to not be occupied anymore and then it will flip the junction in my favor. That's how it's set up. So you get to see that progression change, or the signal change aspect once um, the junction's realigned in my favor to go down uh, line two. This is one of the things that was screwing up in the initial testing. So we got restricting and then medium clear. And you can see the cab signals adjusting to that. It's pretty cool.
So you're gonna have another run-in with Zone A aspects in a moment. Which I think is really, really cool. You don't see many flashing aspects on the Long Island Railroad. So when you enter Zone A and then you suddenly see like Approach Limited, Limited Clear, Medium Approach, Advanced Approach, all that kind of cool stuff, it's a nice little change of pace. So we've got a limited clear coming onto line two. And we're good to pretty much just almost floor it. And there's the uh, AI train that we've been following since Jamaica. He's pulling into Hunters Point Avenue now. He'll continue to Long Island City. There we go. There's our bump up to 80 code. And we're in the tunnel. And that's it. It's really, really dark down here. And it's kind of unfortunate that the headlights don't have more of an influence on your visibility. Because in real life, I mean, the headlights, if you crank them up to bright, you can see quite a bit down here. So we're going under the East River now. I think I mentioned it in one of the, the streams with Jamie, but these tunnels, I think, were finished being built and commissioned in 1908, which makes them well over 100 years old. Don't quote me on the year. But I know it was before, like, even the Titanic was launched. So uh, that should put it into perspective. And these tunnels are crumbling. Bad. Alright, so now we are underneath Manhattan, almost. Yeah, like right about now, we're underneath Manhattan. And then at the next signal, it starts our normal progression into Penn Station. If you got a clear path at the home signal, then you'll have an approach limited here. If you have a stop signal at the home signal, um, you'll have an advanced approach here. So that's how you can kind of tell how you're going to be approaching Penn Station. And we have an approach limited, so that means we've got a slow clear at the interlocking. So what I kind of like to do is just coast for most of this way, because um, the next signal is going to drop us to a 30 code, so I like to hit that right around 30. This is the second part of the progression, it's approach slow, yellow over yellow. If you had a stop signal ahead, that would instead be approach, which is yellow over red. So that's the home signal I was talking about. We have a slow clear, another slow clear, another slow clear, so... We got a clear path all the way to the platform. And you'll have a 15 code all the way throughout Penn Station. Once you hit the first signal, like we just did, it'll downgrade from a 30 to a 15. And it'll stay there the whole time, until you go down one of the tunnels. That's the only place where it can upgrade. I think I heard rumors in the past of there being, like, a couple tracks that you could get a 30 code down here, but I don't even know if that's correct. Probably just a, one of those real-life signal glitches.
And that's pretty much it. That's the... That's the scenario. That's what I played maybe like 30, 40 times or something during testing to see how the signals would behave after like an AI train clears a certain point, um, what it does after the junction finishes switching, will it clear in my favor? And it took a lot of little tweaking to make that work the way it did. So yeah, this scenario really, really helped. And it was an interesting move too. It's based in reality. I mean, this isn't just fictional bullshit. I mean, sure, there'd be more AI and stuff in real life, but that wasn't really the point of the scenario. After this recording, I'm going to fix my graphics. I don't know how this happened. But even with, like, these suboptimal graphics, I'm still getting 40-ish FPS down here, which kind of sucks. It's kind of poo-poo. They're working on some fixes. We'll see when that goes live. All right, cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed that scenario. You can subscribe to it on the Steam Workshop. And... Try it for yourself. Cool. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.